At least not can hear yeah with the window closed. Yeah. Let's see. Why that is loading. Let me share it out on the Twitter. Wait, that's where I shine on alive. I can still hear them though again. How can login try check on your end if I'm live? Login. Try check on your end if I'm live, because on my phone it's showing that we're not live. But it's showing that we are. You are, you know, like your model. I didn't get it! Because it's not showing that we're alive. This is weird. I think so. Oh, now it's showing that we're alive. What? Oh. This thing is broken. I don't know this thing. Let me share it on the Twitter. Hopefully it works. Yeah, on Twitter. The Twitter, the Twitter, the fly swatter. <laughs> Hopefully this works. Hello. Only get me and somebody else watching. Hello, who's ever watching? We get eyeballs, you know. Huh? We get eyeballs. Eyeballs? Yeah, the lurkers, they lurk, you know. I decided to just do it anyway, because it's kind of muffled over here anyway, so. So I guess that's a good thing. If it's, um... You can you cannot hear it so yes, I sent the link so hopefully it works because um on my end because then I may need to get where would you go? Oh there you are <laughs> we may have to go use the speaker phones over there that we have on the um other computer to um I hook up my phone to make it loud if I put him on speakerphone. Because, yeah, I should do that now. I can take over when you're getting that earphone. Hi, hey, it's DJ. You want to come on and do that just in case I need to get that? Mm -hmm. Hey, it's DJ is watching. Mm -hmm. I'm going to interview the... Um, him. Okay, what's his name? Okay. Rick. I'm going to interview Rick. <laughs> Rick. It's Rick. Hi. Hey, it's DJ. Hi, Triple G. Hi, Triple G's. Ew. What? This well, it's been a long time since we used it. Ew. What? Gross. Don't touch my Nintendo Switch. Touch you. No. Yeah. Don't touch me in the hands. Hands? Yeah. Hands. No! No, I need to clean my arm. Good. 
It's not letting him in. Wait. Don't touch me with your sticky hands. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna put my hands in my. I don't go. It that was sticky. Put in your hands. I'm taking over this life and I'm going to dance. <laughs> I'm a little teapot shut and stout. This is my wet and click, click, click. Get my darn donut. I gotta get over there so I can go do that. <laughs> Let me go this way. Yeah, he was dancing. Let's see. Okay. Let me see if this will work. Okay, Logan, well. Yes. I'm gonna mute the TV. Okay. Um. Oh, I gotta go turn off the fans too while I'm at it. Why? Cause then you won't be able to hear. That one, I, I was on the delete triple G's because, um, you can't hear it from the living room, but there is a party. That is happening downstairs. Let me see if that I was asking people's opinion if they wanted me to keep going. I don't know. See, it's picking them up. So that was just a question of asking people. If they wanted me to keep going with the live as scheduled or canceling it and rescheduling it and just seeing my monkey face later um, for a live. But since it's kind of muffled in the living room, um, you probably can yeah, they're loud. Let me see on my phone. Um, let me mute my mic a fast one. I Okay, um, why wait for, we're doing, my student, okay, I'm not muted. Okay, why we wait for, I have to, it wouldn't let him in, and thankfully these Logitech speakers that I still have actually work, so, um, I can probably put them on speakerphone, but I don't know if, um, it'll pick up, it's too works that's what i was testing because then if i put the mic in the thing i don't know if oh you can hear me typing okay you put we're doing good triple g's how are you doing Um, hopefully you guys can hear it okay, but, um, see, you can hear them still yet out there. Um, that's good. Okay, 
I'm going to play my text message sound that I get for when I get text messages. Can you guys let me know if you guys hear it? Oh, I would have to do it like that. Can you hear that? I can hear you. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a dock. I have a dock on my phone for my text messages. I don't know how much people actually thought um there was a dock around and there was no dock just in my phone. Okay, I'm just making sure. Okay. But I have no docks. This is my phone. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Okay. I'm going to ask the people on in the chat if they can hear you too. So that way, because I have you on speakerphone and on my computer speaker. So <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah, the problem is I don't have a Google account when this thing came up. And it won't let me oh. make one. Oh, really? Weird. Yeah, it keeps saying, do you want to use your, your email address? I put yes. And it says, sorry, that's already in existence. I say, yeah, me, dumbass. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that is so weird. <laughs> I am sorry then about that. Then it wouldn't send me a password. I mean, it's like this thing. No point hope. Oh, wow. That's really weird. But anyway, thank you for coming on. We're actually live on YouTube right now. So people can, they can, they're saying that they can hear you. So they can hear Well, that you. is good. Yeah. So, but thank you for coming on and chatting with us my pleasure. i truly appreciate it so do you want to my pleasure for sure do you want to go ahead and um introduce yourself to everybody who's watching and of course if anybody has questions i'll um ask you the question all right well my name is rick mccullum i've been a stuntman and actor in hollywood for 37 years i am the co-founder of the hollywood ghost hunters along with Ken hotter who most of you probably know better is Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. And we go ghost hunting all over the place. As a matter of fact, I just got back from Ireland and Scotland where I've been to um, Hellfire uh, Club and Lep Castle in Ireland. Wow. That's interesting. So far, everybody's saying cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's this lady that's in the chat. Her name is Triple G's. She said, hello, Rick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. She is pretty awesome, um, Triple G's. Um, so how long have you been doing, like, your acting and stunt coordinating and doing the paranormal? How long have you been doing that? Well, you? there are different answers. Uh, paranormal, 52 years, and movie stuff, 37 years. Oh, wow, interesting. And what made you? I think that I might have been ghost hunting more than anybody on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> what made you, if you don't mind me asking, what made you want to get into both worlds? Yeah, well, first off, I always wanted to do do sets for movies since I was three years old. Uh, believe it or not, my mom and dad took me to a uh, John Wayne movie. And there was a scene in there where they took a uh, wagon off a cliff. And when we got home, we had a two-story house, and the stairs were inside. And my dad and mom were watching TV, and they saw me go flying by in my little red pedal car and flew, took off right down the stairs. And I mean, it flew all the way down to where I landed at the bottom of the stairs, face first, got two black eyes. Wow. But my dad said... He said, I was chasing your little butt. He says, I just couldn't catch up to you. I had too much of a lead. And he says, 
I knew right there what you were going to do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. That's like, it, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Sounds like a stunt baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and how'd you get into the um, paranormal, if you don't mind me asking? Well, that's why I'm here, right? Isn't it great? So yeah. You can these <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, actually, it's, it was just by accident. Uh, my grandfather had died suddenly, mm -hmm. and he wanted to be buried in Paducah, Kentucky. And we lived in Chicago, and my mom and I didn't have very much money. I was only 13 at the time. Um, so we put his body on a train, and we got on the train and went to Paducah, Kentucky. And when we got there, we are trying to find a place to stay, you know, till the, till the uh, service was the next day, and looking for someplace cheap and close. So we walked into this one place, and my mother said, yeah, we're looking for a room for the night. The guy goes, well, I only have one left. He says, and I have to tell you, it's haunted. Oh. Well, I'm 13 years old. You know what that's like? Woo-hoo! <laughs> this is like a golden ticket to Disneyland. Yes, we're you. Yeah. We're going. So, so anyway, we get up in this room. And it's about 15 feet across and about 20 feet wide. And it's all wooden floors. And the uh, two, uh, two beds are on each side of the 20-foot sides. So there was probably 15 feet between them. And uh, they were on rollers, so you could put the beds anywhere you wanted. Uh -huh. Well, you know, we had a real long day, so we were real tired. So we both crashed. Yeah. And uh, in the middle of the night, I hear my mother scream. So I'm mad. I, jerk right awake and I look over and I see her bed flying through the floor. I mean, it's on the floor. It's just really zooming across the floor towards me. And I'm looking over and then that's when I realized that my bed is moving towards her. And the two beds smashed together in the middle of the room. And we just looked at each other and my mother goes, well, I guess the guy was right. Wow. So, yeah, that, that started it. Uh, right there, and, and we tried everything to debunk it, and this is long before anybody had ever heard the word debunk. Yeah. But my mother was really smart, so we grabbed the beds and shoved them to see how far we could shove them, and they'd only go a couple feet. So I, you know, we would. I was in it. My mother tried to push me to see how far I would go. I pushed her, and we couldn't get anywhere close to what this did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we, we had no, we had no answer for it. Wow. That's interesting. That's what got me started. After that, I was like, "Okay, I'm convinced. Let's let's find more stuff." Wow, that's that's really interesting. That really is. Now I'll be probably terrified, but <laughs> but that's really interesting to hear. Well, so, you got to remember, I fall off roofs and you know get yeah. blown up and fly off the sides of cars into barrels and things like that. So I don't get terrified very easily. Uh, I bet. <laughs> Um, Triple G's in the comments said that you're you're older than she is. I'm older than most everybody, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than dirt. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Pink. Um. So, um, you sent me those um your IMDb page and all that and whatnot. Of all the works that you've done, by far, what was your favorite? You want to share anything with us about that and or anything like that? Well, actually, pretty much every movie I've been on is, has been something that I really liked. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think I had the most fun on a movie called Hatchet 2. Hatchet and that was you know, part of Adam Green's um, quadrology. That's four movies in a row, yeah. which I was lucky enough to work on all four. Um, but in part two, I had a really good part, and not only did I have a good part, uh, you know, Kane Hodder is my best friend, you know, we, we started Hollywood Ghost Hunters together, Yeah. but he actually killed me in the show by chainsawing me in half, going through the crotch and through the top of the head, Wow. and not only did he kill me that way, there was a guy hiding behind me, and he got both of us at the same time, oh, Wow. which was a horrendous death. But what was really cool is I got to see it at the uh, premiere at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood. And I'm watching, and as soon as I started getting chainsaw in half, the, the audience just went crazy. I was like, oh, okay, I'm good with this. <laughs> <laughs> they like it, I'm good with it. Wow, that, that that's interesting, really. But, but you know the nice part about, about going to uh, movies and stuff like that? 
I mean, being in the movies, is getting to go on locations. I mean, I, yeah. I've done movies. I was trying to figure out the other day in uh, Texas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Ohio, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, New York, uh, where else? Uh, Nevada, mm -hmm. Northern California, um, you know, and then about a million of them here. And I've also done a movie in uh, Australia. Wow. You've been all so over. Getting there. Yeah, but you know, the nice thing is when we go to these places, that's when me and Kane can uh, find a place to go stuff, whatever's supposed to be haunted, wherever, wherever we're at. There you go. I guess it comes in hand, handy then, huh? <laughs> works out both ways. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It works out real well. So, well, you're more than free to talk about anything you want to talk about, whether it's paranormal. No, so far, nobody's asked questions. So, um, about the. Go ahead. I'm well, sorry. I can, I, I can just babble endlessly if you'd like. Um, go ahead. You're more than one free. of my big things that I like to do is I go to Scotland every year for a month. Uh huh. And that is to ghost hunt all the old castles and, and things like that. And, uh,. Actually, I went, I'm just coming back from Scotland and Ireland. I went earlier this year for just a couple of weeks because my friends, there's a group over there called Sp Scottish Paranormal, which is really big. And I mean, this is the only group that I've ever seen that has its own dedicated research facility. And I don't mean like in somebody's back bedroom. I mean, they have their own set of offices and oh, all the wow. computer setups. You know, one guy does audio, other guys do video. I mean, it's amazing what they have. Um, and uh, I, I was lucky enough not to brag, but um, they uh, gave me a lifetime membership and put me in their Hall of Fame, which was super cool. Um, but they invited me to go with them to uh, uh, Dundrum Castle, the Hellfire Club, and Leap Castle, which is phenomenally famous. So is the Hellfire Club. Mm -hmm. uh, Dundrum Castle is one of the places that they've used in uh, Game of Thrones. Wow, interesting. I actually haven't watched Game of Thrones, so <laughs> I don't know too much about that show. Actually, I've never watched it either. And everybody says, well, wow, you would love it. And I said, well, yeah, but I remember when it's on. <laughs> you know, I get told the same thing, I mean, too. <laughs> you know, I'm usually not here. I'm usually out trying to talk to dead people, so. I got a question for you about that. Has any of them actually followed you home? Um, you know, I don't know if any of them have, but I do know that, uh, I did have two of them try to attach themselves to me, Wow, which was, was, was quite scary. It was at the Pioneer Saloon outside, uh, Good Springs, Nevada. Uh-huh. I heard of that thing. And, uh, actually, if you go on to, onto YouTube under Rick McCollum EVPs, I think you can find it, but because they were videotaping it. Um, I was sitting there and they were talking about the people that had been murdered in the saloon and I had two K2 meters in front of me, you know, the ones with the five lights. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one was mine and one was the girl sitting next to me, but she didn't have any room on her table to put anything. So they're both sitting in front of me and they had other stuff up there, REM pods and everything else up and nothing was going off except for the two K2 meters in front of me mm -hmm. and everybody's kind of looking around there. And then I heard my name with my own ears and I turned around and said, did you guys hear that? And they said, yeah, somebody said Rick. And I was like, wow. okay. So then we're a little bit later, I hear it again. And all of a sudden, I mean, the K2 meters are still going off. I get violently ill. And I don't mean just kind of, oh, I don't feel good. I mean, yeah. like I'm doing everything I can not to throw up on the table or just fall over. Because all of a sudden, I am so sick. Mm -hmm. And I was fine. I mean, it's just like, bam, my head starts pounding. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. And the girl that was running the investigation, she's the one that runs the Pioneer Salute things, sees the K2 meters going off and she goes, wow, the spirits must really like you. And I look over at it and you can see there's something wrong on my face on this because my stomach is bloated out to, I look like Santa Claus because my stomach yeah. is so upset. It's just like, <sighs> and I just look over and I said, she says, I think the spirits really like you. And I said, I'm not so sure they do. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, when we listen back to the EVPs uh, off the video, uh, right after I said, I'm not so sure we do, you hear a girl's voice say, we do. Wow. Right? So, and then you hear Rick again with the, with our ears, yeah, but you can hear it on the, on the thing too. And uh, the girl works me, she goes, what's wrong? I said, feel my forehead. She, does, she goes, oh my gosh, you are ice cold. And the way she 
describes yeah. it. She goes, not like cold, but like if you put your hand on dry ice, that's how cold I was. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there. The girl next to me puts her arm, her hand on my forearm and goes, oh, my, you are ice cold. So I look over and I said, uh, I think I better go outside. I said, I'm really sick. So I get up and I walk. I'm walking by this girl who's about a foot and a half in front of me looking the other direction. And you can hear her on the tape go, wow, I could feel him from here. Right? She wasn't even looking towards me. She could just feel how cold it was. So I go back outside. I'm out there about 15 minutes and Jill comes out and said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, let's go back inside. I'm feeling a little better. So I walk back in. As soon as I walk in, wham, it hits me again. So I just looked at her and said, guys, in all my years of ghost hunting, I've never left a ghost hunt, but I have to get out of here. I said, I just, I'm going to ruin your night. I'm just way too sick. So I turn around, I start to walk away, and there's a man's voice on the tape that says, turn Rick back. Oh. And you see me stop, and I turn around, and I look, and I said, all right, guys, it was nice meeting you. And I turn around, and the voice on the tape says, release him. Oh, wow. So... Uh, something happened there. But what's funny is I've gone back there several times and I've never gotten sick again. But every time I go back there, they call out my name. Mm -hmm. And if we're using any kind of equipment, um, my name will come up. So, I mean, it, it's really funny. Even the girls over there laugh, you know, so it, they're going to call you out. You know, they are. So, yeah. So that, that one was very, didn't follow me home. But boy, oh boy, there was no doubt they were trying to attach to me. Yeah. And it wasn't one, it was like two. It. And um, by, by the way, the Pioneer Saloon is very famous because uh, Clark Gable's wife, Carol Lombard, uh -huh. was killed in a plane crash right behind, you know, up on the mountain, right behind the Pioneer Saloon. Yeah. And and Clark Gable came and stayed in the saloon, sat at the bar drinking and smoking uh, cigars for three and a half days while they were getting her down from the mountain. Oh yeah, I heard about that story and um, the Pioneer Saloon actually heard about that. Yeah, so I mean, that's, it's, it's an interesting place. Matter of fact, the last time I was there, we'd all ghost hunted and everybody was off in the far. There's there's two separate places. Uh, there's like a gift store bar, restaurant off on one side, mm -hmm. then you go through the courtyard and then there's another bar um, with a another little meeting room right behind it. And I went across, I was the only one in there. I went in there and I was in the bathroom. And I thought somebody was cleaning up or something because it sounded like somebody was dragging a, a table across the floor, like a big heavy wood table. Like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm standing there, you know, doing what I went to the bathroom for. And then I hear it on the wall go, <laughs> all across the hall, all across the wall. I'm like, wow. what are they doing out there? So I walk outside, there's absolutely nobody there. So I go walking back to her and I said, what were you guys doing? And they said, what are you talking about? I said, what was all the noise outside the bathroom? They said, we've been over here. So we all walked back and we tried looking around and there's absolutely nothing could have created the noise. Wow. But I mean, it was it was really loud. I mean, it was like you could say, oh, I think I heard a noise. Like, <laughs> it feels like people moving furniture. And stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there, there's a question. Um, Triple G, she wants to know where you were born because to her, you sound like you were maybe born in Germany. So she wants to know where you were born at. Well, that would be, see, now there's another Rick McCollum. If you look it up on thing there, and he was actually the uh, producer of Star Wars. Yeah, he she was, was born wondering. in Germany. See, now, I'm just a poor little lonely stuntman who, you know, gets blown up and hunts ghosts. So <laughs> I was born in Chicago. I hope that answered your question, Triple G's, because she was mentioning stars. And I was like, no, I don't think that's <laughs> the same person. <laughs> That's the other guy, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I get that a lot. <laughs> What's really bad is all the stuff I've done. I've done 75 movies, and I got the ghost hunting thing, and I've been on ghost adventures and all kinds yeah. of neat stuff. And I'm only the second most famous Rick McCullough on Google. <laughs> <laughs> That's how... <laughs> That's I... rep, the producer of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good thing you didn't hear that. I'm going to get beat out, being beat out by the producer of Star Wars. Isn't bad. <laughs> That's how I actually found out about you was because of Ghost Adventures. I, I'm really, I had my own experiences with the paranormal and whatnot, but that's how I found out about you uh, is through Ghost Adventures, and and your Hollywood Ghost Hunters and all that. That's how I found out about you guys. It was through Ghost Adventures. Yeah, Ghost Adventures was a lot of fun. Actually, I'm still friends with uh, 
those guys. So that's it was a good thing getting to meet them. As a matter of fact, I have an online magazine. It's called, uh, if you go to HollywoodGhostHunters.com, mm -hmm. uh, you'll go on there. And, and the first person that I interviewed for the magazine was Zach oh, Bacon. Yeah. And then I also, uh, a little while later, like a couple other issues later, I uh, interviewed Nick Groff. Oh, Nick, yeah. And I've, yeah, so go to HollywoodGhostHunters.com, read the magazine, it's free. If you don't like it, you don't get your money back. I put that link in the chat. Somebody else <laughs> said they also watch Ghost Adventures, too, in the chat. And my son is watching <laughs> the live, too. Yeah, that, that actually was quite a, quite fun. And it was it was funny that I, I happened to be the one that, you know, was funny. Like, Nick and I walked through downstairs, and both of us stopped at the same time and looked at each other, and the hair on our arms was just sticking straight up. Yeah. I mean, that, that, was, that was interesting there. But there's a, there's a more, there's an interesting side light to that story about the ghost adventures. Oh, please. Because that, sure. was at the peak, that was at the Pico House. Yeah. Well, about a year later, a ghost hunting group called me up and invited me and Kane and R.A. to go there. Well, our, Kane was somewhere. He's always somewhere. He, you know, he's always working or doing a convention or something. Yeah. So R.A. and I went down there. And the story of what happened at the Pico House was that the uh, Chinese, they had the Tong, that is like the, the mafia. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, they were pushing around the Mexicans. And I say Mexicans because they were actually from Mexico. Most of that area at the time was all almost all Mexican mm -hmm. because at one time it was Mexican territory. And uh, and then the Irish. Well, what happened is the Tong murdered the Irish cop on the beat who everybody liked. And the Mexicans and the Irish attacked the Chinese. Wow. Uh, you know, went after the Tong. And 19 people got, got killed. Wow. Well, when we went back, I was trying to communicate with the, with the uh, K2 meter and I wasn't getting anything at all. Nothing. Zero. Mm -hmm. And then finally it dawned on me, and I asked somebody, I said, hey, does anybody here speak Spanish? And this girl goes, I do. And I said, would you ask the same questions like five, five seconds after I ask it in English? So I would ask a question in English, nothing. She would ask it in Spanish, and we'd get, you know, three, four, and five light answers all along the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really kind of thinking out of the box to say, well, wait a minute, if there was three different groups here two of them probably spoke different languages i asked if anybody spoke chinese that was a that was a no yeah. <laughs> you know? but finding somebody in california that can speak spanish is not hard yeah you know? <laughs> i'm sure there's a lot of people who can <laughs> no, unfortunately i'm not one i wish i could oh yeah i kind of know spanish but not too well so <laughs> So that was just a little sidelight. Uh, another sidelight to the ghost adventure story. Uh, Kane and Aaron were uh, Kane and Aaron were off at one place. Uh, Ra and, and uh, Zach were at another place, mm -hmm. and Nick and I were down in the basement. And we're standing there, and all of a sudden we hear somebody walking across the, the you know the top you know above us. Yeah. Well, there's a, that building is locked. The other guy, the other group is in the other building across the way. So there's nobody in the building, so we're, we're hearing it, and all of a sudden we hear someone talking at the other end of the thing. So we go scoot down there, and Nick Bo Nick's uh, spirit box had been turned on, mm -hmm. and it was spitting out words. So he turns it off, and we hear really loudly, it sounds like someone running uh, up or down steel stairs going <laughs> real loud. So we go take off down there, yeah. And they have one side of the thing blocked off that we can't get to. So we go down there, we look around, and all they have down there is concrete stairs. Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting thing was, I mean, it was so loud, we're both saying, I heard it. He goes, I did too. So yeah. when we went back, uh, for the time, you know, we were doing the Spanish and stuff like that, I told somebody that story, and the guy goes, really? Come with me. And the other part was open. And just to the side, you know, we, we can only go as far as is one place and to the right. Just to the left, we walked around, and right around the corner was a set of steel stairs going up. Oh, wow. And we didn't know they were there, so the fact that we heard them, you know, was, was kind of interesting, the fact that we did not know there were steel stairs in there. Wow. That's really interesting. That is really, truly interesting. I, I love hearing stuff about this. It blows my mind, because I... 
like I said, I had my own fair share, and I love hearing all other people's experiences too. Well, let's hear yours. Well, um, I did come face to face with a spirit in a cemetery. Um, you know how some cemeteries there, um, they have like um like bigger like um how do I describe it? Like their graves are like um like up like a house looking kind of a thing. They yeah. became, there was a little window and just so happened there was a, I was at a doctor's appointment and just so happened my mom who can see too um she was like there's something over there she saw something moving and then when I went to go and look just to see what she was looking it, this person this person I say a person because I'm not quite sure if it was a girl or a man came right up to the window and actually looked right at me you could see the outline of the face but you couldn't make out who it was exactly so that's why I could, I don't know if it was a man or a lady, but it came right up to the window and looked right at me. And then I, I got, cause I was like, oh my God. So I ran and the person ended up like following me and my mom and my son at the time. And I did have a couple times where I was at a church function and there were people who had passed on that grounds just so happened. And they took my, they used my energy to come through. I know that that kind of happens with some people that they get their energy used to come through. And I was all agitated and I saw somebody coming out of the office and I was like, okay. And I was the only person who could see the person, nobody else saw him, they didn't know anything about it, but I could see the person coming out of the office and I was like, okay, that's why I feel all irritated and annoyed and drained. And it just came through like with that and I'm sorry. No, I'm rambling. I am so sorry. Um, no, no, it's a good, that's a good story. And you know what's funny is uh, it's it, it kind of re, I can relate to that because I'll go ghost hunting with some people, and I will get this feeling, or you know, all of a sudden in the, in the back of my neck and down my back, mm -hmm. and I know that there's a spirit there. But I can always tell when them when there's one around. Yeah, or at least most of the time, and. Uh, King's always asking, he goes, man, he says, you have all this stuff happen to you. Why does it happen to me? I said, hey, I don't know. I said, but the fact is that I'm really open to it. Yeah. You know, I go ghost hunting all the time. I said, I have my whole life. Yeah. I said, I kind of think that ghosts, the only people who ever see a ghost is the ones that the ghosts want you to see them. Yeah. So I, I think they go off vibrations. And if you have the, the right vibration, like your heart is, clear you know you're not you know not a jerk not saying anybody i know is yeah but i mean if, if you go ghost hunting a lot uh you tend to get that feeling a little bit more yeah. you know what i mean about more of a feeling for them instead of that and i tell people all the time when i first started really getting you know uh contact and evidence and you know all kinds of neat stuff was when i stopped ghost hunting mm -hmm. it, instead of going in hunting them I will just go in there and go, hey, guys, my name's Rick. Uh, you know, I just came here to see if there's anybody who wants to commu communicate with me. Uh, and one of the things that I will do is that a lot of people go in and say, all right, I want you to come to the K2 meter and light it up. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, you know, some of these people might have been in their 1700s, 1800s. They have no clue in the world what the light is, what the yeah. K2 meter is, who, who you are in the first place. Yeah. Right? So, so I always like to go in there and say, look, my name is Rick. What I have in my hand is a device that will light up when you come closer. Mm -hmm. It won't hurt you, and I'll put it, I'll put it up to my face and so see it won't hurt you at all. But if you come close enough, it will light up, and then I'll know that you're here, and we can talk to each other by using this. I'll ask you a question. You come close and light it up. Yeah. Right? And, and I tend to get really good reactions that way. And I always try and tell that whenever, whenever I'm a guest, that, you know, ghost or something, I say, talk to it first. Don't just go in there hunting. You yeah. know what I mean? That makes sense. I know. Um, yeah, it, it, it seems to help too. Yeah. Because there's the USS, I don't know if you heard of the ship, the USS Missouri, the battleship Missouri from World War II. Sure. It's docked here and people can actually go and tour the ship. And we, my mom and I both saw somebody in the kitchen. You could see the cook in the kitchen actually cooking we both saw the person and it was like interacting with us it was staring right back at us and interacting with us so we saw somebody in the kitchen and just so happened i picked it up on film when i took a picture so yeah that, did you get it yeah i got it i have it on facebook i can actually share it with you later on and 
show it yeah, to you. Send it to me. I'd love okay. to see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it just sounds to me like you have the right vibration that they are, that's, you know, they're attracted to. Okay. Yeah, I kind of think <laughs> so too. <laughs> Somebody in the chat, the lady vamp, she has a question for you. She wants to know how you feel about like dolls, for example, that have spirits attached to them. How do you feel about something like that? Okay, can you repeat that? Because I missed uh, one of the words. Is it, how do I feel about like dolls, for example? You know how there, oh, there's the dolls. yeah, like yeah. she feels that she has some doll. She collects vintage dolls, and she feels that there's some of them that may be. Um, taken over by spirit, so she wants to know how you feel about them. Well, you know, I don't know. I haven't had any real reactions, interactions with the dolls, mm -hmm. um, but I do know people that I respect that have haunted doll collections. Mm -hmm. Now, the people in um, Scottish Paranormal have a big um, collection of haunted items. As a matter of fact, one of the things that they have is a cannonball. Wow. <laughs> That's one thing you wouldn't want to have mad at you. Yeah. Um, and, and I have another friend friend named Jamie Ben's house, uh, who also has a bunch of haunted dolls, which she had at this one ghost hunt uh, that I was on. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to do much with the dolls, though, mm -hmm. because we were always out walking around. But um, I know that there's a lot of people that have, you know, collections of them, so, and people that I like and I trust, so I'm going to say there has to be some sort of something to them. She, that was her question, if how do you feel about things like, spirits having like dolls having spirits or anything like that that was her question well i don't think it's a spirit well i think it's something attached to it yeah. is what i think it is and um you know i think it's something that they liked in life and they just hanging on to it you know my theory my theory is that you know the reason something sticks around is that number one well there's a couple reasons number one could be it doesn't know it's dead yeah and it's just hanging on to the things that it you know, that it do in life. That's mm -hmm. why you might end up getting something like a haunted doll. You know, they're trying to have some comfort by hanging on to it, and that's how they get attached. Uh, I also believe, too, that there's people who, you know, don't know they died, and they just have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And then I think there's a third thing where there's people who have passed on, and they're afraid to see what comes next. So mm -hmm. they don't go anywhere. They stay right where they're at. Yeah, she says she has 15 dolls that are like that. Well, that's interesting. That yeah, that's really interesting. How does she know that? Um, and I'm not being mean. Oh, I'm no, no. I'm not being mean at all. I just say, well, how, how does she know that? Did they do something that, you know, she can quantify? And well, while she types her answer, I can tell I, one of the, um, one example that she gave me when she tried to take a picture of her dolls that she feels that have spirits attached to them. It comes out blurry, the picture. It, um, and she says she just wrote she can see. Um, but she, I know she mentioned the pictures that when she tried to take a picture, it would come out yep. blurry. And she said, she wrote over here, I can see and talk. So 
I don't know if they talk back with her or not, but that's what she wrote in the chat. Well, that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, the, the fact that there's there's a very famous house out here called the Omen House here mm -hmm. in the Hollywood Hills, and right next to it is where the Manson family killed Sharon Tate and all those people. And I've been up there many, 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 many times. But the first time I went there, David was giving us a tour, and we walk in, we walk down this hallway, and I stopped dead center of the hallway mm -hmm. just before this bathroom, and I turned around, looked at him, and I said, uh, "David, there's a portal right here." Mm -hmm. Right? He goes, "Oh no, no, no." Um, James von Prague was here. He said there's a portal, but it's in the bathroom. And I said, well, James von Prague missed by 10 feet. It's right here. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, we go out, and one of my guys, Robert, takes a picture of where the fish tank is, where all the little guys fall over, little, little uh, figurines he has. Yeah. You know, they'll just fall over on their own. Takes a picture there. He takes a picture of where I said the portal was, and then he takes another picture to the right of that where the kitchen is. Mm-hmm. The first picture is absolutely clear. The next one where I said the portal is, the whole thing is orangeed out, and where the kitchen is, is perfectly clear. Wow. So the fact that she, her doll might be blurry, could just be showing, you know, excess energy from something, yeah. actually have something to do with the doll. But the, but when the, after I said that, then I saw that, you know, the one thing was totally orangeed out, I was like, wow, that's pretty convincing. <laughs> Yeah, my mom, she she's into, well, not into, but she knows about paranormal because she had her um, own experiences, too. Like, her job, it's right by a cemetery. It used to be a cemetery before it um, became a school. And she sees them walking by. They had coming out of the closets in a classroom that she's been in. They use, like, one of the closets in the classroom as, like, a portal, like how you mentioned about in that story you just told. And... um. She sees them coming out of things and everything, too. So I can understand that. But you know, it was, it was very strange, is that uh, my mom passed away about five years ago, and when she was really sick, I went back to Chicago, and I stayed with her for four months taking care of her until she finally did pass away. But one night, she's sitting there in the uh, recliner, and where she would sit to watch TV and stuff, you could see all the way down the hallway to the back door. Mm-hmm. And she, now she was on medication and stuff, so it could have been something else. But she looks over, she goes, oh, the Indian is back. Oh, wow. I looked over, so what are you talking about? She goes, there's an Indian. And you see, he stands at the door down there all the time and looks down here at me. I said, wait a minute, you see, you have been seeing an Indian back there? She goes, oh, for a long, long time. And I said, you never told me about this? You know, wow. I'm kind of well-known ghost hunter, Bob. Why are you <laughs> talking to me about this stuff? Right? Yeah. And she goes, uh. I know he beats me no harm. He just stands there. She says, I think he's protecting me. She says, uh, and she just looks over me. And she had a real serious look on her face. She goes, you know, I've seen spirits my whole life. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, that was kind of an interesting thing. And I know my dad did, too. So, I don't know if it's genetic, if it's just something that, you know, your vibrations, you know, bring it on. I, I, yeah. I don't know. So... That's you know, the fact is, my mom saw him, your mom sees him, yeah. you have experiences, I have experiences, you know, maybe it's all connected. Somehow. I think for me, it started when I was 11, when my grandfather passed away, because when he passed, he came and visited us where we're at, um, living at at the time. Because I, you know, some people, they have colognes, their own scent, I could smell my grandfather. I said, my mom, I yeah. smell Papa. That's what we used to call my grandfather, Papa. I said, I smell Papa. And she's like, oh, he's, that's nothing. You know, she tried to brush it off. And then she was like, oh, that is your grandfather. And, you know, she he came to visit. And for me, it started off when it was, I was 11 for me. Well, well, I cannot tell you how many times people, because I get messages on Facebook mm -hmm. all the time and things like that. And I cannot tell you how many people have told me that a loved one visited them the night that they passed away. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's it's got to be over a hundred. Yeah. And it's pretty much the same story. Somebody passed away, you know, in another state and they got up to get a drink of water, or woke up in the middle of the night and there they were standing at the end of the bed. Yeah. And they looked at him for a second and out there, gone. Oh, um. So I mean, I've heard at least a hundred times that. Yeah. 
Triple G's uh, wants to know if you can possibly answer this, that when people are ready to pass, do they see dead um, family members who have passed away? Would you know all that? Yeah, well, actually, yeah, I, I do know about that. Um, <laughs> my dad got very ill, and once again, that this sounds like a trend. He was sick for four months, and I went back, and my mm -hmm. stepmother and I took care of him. My younger brother also came back to help out when he could. Um, but the hospice people who are by far nothing less than angels on earth, you know, the people that, mm -hmm. that come to help you when someone's terminally ill. Yeah. And uh, they told us, they said right off the bat, they said, look, here's what's going to happen. And they told us straight out, they said, they're going to start seeing family members who have mm -hmm. passed. And they also told me something that really gave me some comfort. They said, if your dad stops talking to you, Mm -hmm. Don't take it personal because what happens is they they know they have not much time and they generally shut down the people they're closest to because yeah. they know they've already said everything they need to say. Mm -hmm. So my dad didn't completely stop talking to me, but you know we didn't have conversations with me. But he was so sick anyway. But um, he he started seeing. You know, his brother, yeah. uh, who had passed, both his brothers, and he, he you know, he'd say, oh, there, that's my brother right there. And he, matter of fact, when he was in the hospital, he pointed right at the end of the bed. He goes, that's my brother right there. That's, that's my brother, Dom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I, I actually do believe that that happens. And, um, I actually had what's called a lucid dream. That's mm -hmm. where you have a dream and you're awake. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I dreamed that I was in a black tunnel and that I was dead. Which is not exactly the most comforting dream to ever have. Yeah. And all I knew was that, that I was terrified. And, you know, because it was pitch black and I had no idea what might be right next to me in the whole thing. Yeah. And then I saw like a little pinpoint of light way off in the distance. And I thought, oh, man, I'm dead. I'm in the tunnel of death. Yeah. Right? So I said, well, I can see the light. So that's where I'm going. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I started going through there. And I was still just terrified, you know, being in pitch black except for uh -huh. the light. And as I got closer, I was just kind of creeping along, into, you know, because I was still afraid something was going to grab me or something. And I started feeling things bumping into my leg and brushing past me. And I was like, oh, no, oh, yeah. no, no, no. And I kept going, and I could see figures in the light. And as I got closer to the light, the tunnel lit started to light up, and I could still feel the bumping and the pushing in the along my legs. Uh -huh. And as I got closer enough, I looked down, and it was all the pets that I've had in my life oh, were wow. pushing me towards the light. Oh, wow. Interesting. But when I got close enough, I could look and I could see people that I knew in the light. So. Oh, wow. Interesting. And yeah, so I think somebody was, was trying to tell me something. I'm sorry. And Triple G's, I actually have witnessed that myself um, with their question with both my grandfather, my grandma, and my mom's sister all our relatives actually came in and like, well, not all of them, but there's been a few that came to that, you know, that passed away that came when they were dying. And I saw them, even my grandma, when she died, she's like, who's a man? There's a man standing right there, you know? So I see yeah, that. And it's, if the hospice people know about it and they tell yeah. you about it in advance, I mean, they are, they do nothing but care for the terminally ill. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times they must have been there when that happened? I mean, yeah. it must be thousands of times. Yeah. And Triple G's wants to know if there it's true that there's a bright light when the person passes when they're in that tunnel. If you, you know, I, I have no idea. I really have no idea because yeah. I believe that's not something we're supposed to see until it's our time. Yeah. But I kind of hope it is. And I think from the dream that I had about seeing the light ahead of me and going towards it mm -hmm. that uh that's at least tells me that it might be true so i, I certainly hope it is yeah i hope so too <laughs> i hope there's a bright light i know one time um maybe this will help i was in a place with a couple of people and uh, we started getting uh answers on the K2 meter. I mean, straight out answers. I'd say, are you a man? And he'd go, you know, all five lights. I'd say, are you a woman? And it would, nothing would happen. I said, so you are a man. They go, Bleh. so whenever I use the K2 meter, I, I always ask it twice. Yeah. 
Okay, I don't ask once. I always double check it. And finally, I said, is there somebody here that wants to cross over? And it went all five lights. I said, okay, here's what you need to do. I'm not sure how this works, but from what I understand, can you see a white light? And it mm -hmm. went all five lights. And I said, okay, what I want you to do is start going towards it. Even if you're scared, just keep going. And I said, you understand? It went all five lights again. And the, the two girls were just looking at me like, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. Right? Because it was so instant that they were back and forth. And finally, I said, all right, here's what I want. I said, you're giving me five light responses. That means you're still close to me. I want you to go farther away. I want these lights to go down so I know that you're going towards the light. Mm -hmm. And it goes to four. And I said, keep going. And it goes down to three. And I said, are you close? And it, it, it went three again. I said, okay, can you give us a sign that you made it? Right? Yeah. And right then, the girl on my left, her head just snaps around. And I looked over there, too, because I heard a voice. Mm -hmm. Now, every ghost hunter in the world knows that you don't say, I heard this, and you hear it, too. Yeah. Because that's just suggesting something to them, and they'll almost always say yes. Yeah. So I looked over, and I said, you heard something? And she goes, yeah. I said, what did you hear? And she goes, I heard a voice. And I said, I heard a voice, too. What did you hear? She goes, I heard a man's voice say goodbye. And I said, yeah, so did I. So I, I always sit there and hope that, that, that he actually did cross over. Wow. I mean, I, I really hope that's what happened because it would be, I would like to help somebody do that. Yeah. But I mean, when you hear a voice say, a voice say goodbye right after you asked, you know, for them to give you a sign, I don't know what better sign you could possibly have. Yeah. Than that. That's very true. It's very so true. maybe that will help her answer about the bright light because I told him to go towards the light. He was heading that way. So. Yeah. She wrote over here, yeah, because I want to see where I'm going. I guess when you know when she passes away, she wants to see if, make sure there's a light guiding her way. <laughs> but she put LOL after it, so. Yeah, well, the nice thing, too, is I also have the feeling that if you're a little, little scared or something, like mine was my pets, yeah. you know, whacking me in the right direction. I yeah. have the feeling, too, that, you know, maybe they have a spirit guide that will come out and take your hand and pull you in, you know? Yeah. There's somebody in the chat yeah. that lost their pets recently, too. So he mentioned that he hopes that his pets will join him, too, in the afterlife. So I hope he heard your story about that with your pets. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah. You know, the old saying, all God's creatures, great and small. Yeah. Very true. I, so, I, I would like to think, see, I'm allergic to dogs and cats now. Yeah. And I have Great Danes, I have Dobermans, I mean, you know, and I miss them so much, you know, that yeah. if I, because I can't play with dogs anymore, except for one dog, the dog at Balcony Castle in, in Scotland. I'm not allergic to that dog. He's a big, hairy-looking ape that you think would be exactly the wrong kind of dog, but I'm not allergic wow. to him. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not but, allergic to anything, so. But yeah, I hope I, I, hope I get to see my dogs again, because yeah. I have some great animals. Holly, I hope you heard that. I'm just telling the person, that person in the chat, I hope he heard that. But. Well, I, I heard a story about a guy that uh, he passed away, him and his dog got, he got uh, killed in a car wreck. And uh, they're walking down this long road. And they come across this place that has golden gates and there's, you know, all marble and everything else. Mm -hmm. and there's a man standing outside. He goes, would you like to come in? And he goes, where, are, where am I? And he says, uh, we're well, in heaven. He goes, well, yeah, I'd like to come in. He goes, come, come on. Right? He calls the dog. He goes, the guy he goes, stop. The dog can't come in. Mm -hmm. The guy goes, well, okay. And he turns around. He starts walking down the street. He goes, aren't you coming in? He goes, no. And he kept going. He says, he goes down. There's a guy standing down there wearing overalls. And, you know, kind of what looks like a farm with a gate. And the guy goes, so, who are you? And he, he says, uh, well, where am I? And the guy goes, well, this is heaven. And he says, well, that's what the guy down there said, too. He goes, why didn't you go in? He says, he wouldn't let my dog in. And he yeah. says, okay, well, what would that tell you? He says, how could it possibly be heaven if I couldn't have my dog with me? That's right? true. And the guy looks at him, opens the gate, and he goes, come on in, both of you. And the lady back did want to share a picture, but I think she might be sending it on Facebook. I'm not sure she wanted 
um, to share a picture. So I don't know how she'll be sharing that. Well, let me look and see if I have a picture. The Queen. No, I haven't gotten anything. Yeah, I got a question for you. The Queen Mary, you you've done work with on the Queen Mary, I believe. Oh, many times. Well, now my son and I, we talked about it many times about possibly going there and seeing the ship and everything. Can you share your experiences with that? I would love to hear about that. Well, I mean, uh, I've had different experiences no. on there. Um, I was down one time. A friend of mine used to give the tours. So mm -hmm. we got a little more access than uh, most people would, which is really nice. But we were down there and... Uh, we were standing by the pool. And the pool is where they usually see a little girl and see her footprints and stuff, in the, you know, on the bottom of the pool. And uh, I was taking pictures, and all of a sudden, my my camera just stopped. And my friend was with me, and he was taking pictures, and his camera stopped. Neither one of our cameras would work. So as soon as we walked away from that thing, they started working again. So that was interesting. Um, one of the the one that happened to me, I was there with my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom came out to visit me before she got sick, and she always wanted to stay on the Queen Mary. Now, a lot of people don't realize that the Queen Mary is, is a hotel. Yeah. Now. So you can stay there. You know, you just have to, yeah. you know, get a room. Um, that won't give you access to most places, but you can walk around the deck, you know, in, mm -hmm. you know, with a K2 meter, which I did. Uh, which was really funny because I had on my Hollywood Ghost Hunter shirt. Yeah. And I was trying to keep a low profile. And while I was out on the deck, and I went up there probably at one in the morning, mm -hmm. between different groups that joined up with me, I mean, people would see me and say, can we go with you? Yeah. And 14 people ghost out with me <laughs> wow. up there. So, so it was, it was you know, pretty interesting. Yeah. But uh, back to the story. When I took my mom there and we were checking in, there were all these girls all dressed up, looked like prom dresses. Yeah. You know, and they were young girls. So I thought, yeah, this must be a prom or a big dance or something here. Well, if you've ever seen the pictures of the Queen Mary, the thing is just enormous. Yeah. I mean, we and they put us way in the bow, which is the front of the ship. So we walked down there, and it's probably a good 250, mm -hmm. 300 yards, you know, that I can see all the way down this hallway. And the hallway looks like the Shining. You know, the yeah. hallway is Shining. It's really creepy. But we walked down there. Not a person on our floor that we could hear or see as we were passing. And... Uh, we get in there, my mother's sitting there, and she goes, can you go to the bakery and give me a donut? Yeah. I said, all right. So I opened up the door, and I stopped, and I'm leaning in the doorway with the doors open. And uh, I asked her if she wanted me to bring her a milk or something like that. And I hear behind me what sounds like 10 to 15 people giggling and laughing like they're walking down the hall, you know, all at a party boat. Yeah. And I turn around, and I look, and the hallway is completely 100% empty. Oh. So... Being, you know, a seasoned ghost hunter like I am. Okay? Yeah. That's a nice way of saying an old <laughs> ghost hunter like me. Um, I scurried down the hallway and started listening in the little alcoves to see if they had gone into one of the rooms close by. Because, I mean, it couldn't have been 25 yards behind me at the most. Yeah. And as I walked back down to the bakery, there wasn't anybody anywhere, you know, anywhere. Yeah. But I mean, I heard these voices clear as could be. I mean, like, ah, 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 and I mean, like 10 to 15 of them. It wasn't like I just heard, like, you know, one little voice. Wow. You know, I thought it was actually the girls from the prom. Wow. You know, and I just kind of turned around and was like, there's nobody here. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, the Queen Mary is a very interesting place. Um, Polly Vlogs Games, he has a question that he wanted to ask you. He wrote over here, does he by any chance communicate with the other side or know anyone that does? I guess I guess like what they call mediums or stuff like that too. I guess that's what he's trying to ask. Yes, I do know several mediums actually. And um, I actually had my first, see, I, I can feel spirits and I can kind of feel where they're at. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't really get... The, the whole psychic thing that like a lot of people have. Yeah. But I went, I was a, and I do my air quotes, a celebrity at this ghost hunt. And I air quote myself because I don't even think I'm a household name, even in my own household. Right. But they invited me to come up for this ghost hunt. And um, 
we were all sitting around and we were staying in this one uh, old time building and all of our rooms were down this one long hallway with, you know, we were across the hall from each other all the way down. And we did what's called an energy circle with this girl named Michelle Wagner, uh-huh. who's a fairly well, fairly well known um, psychic. And we're all holding hands and we're sitting there and, you know, all of a sudden I can see like looking down, like in a black and white movie, a man standing at the end of the hall. Now I can't see the hallway. It's, you know, it's off to the right of me and it's, you know, I can see the door, door frame. That's yeah. it. I can't see down the hallway, but it's just like looking at a, a TV show. I could see him standing there yeah. and I started telling him, I said, I see a guy at the end of the hallway. Right. Yeah. And then I said, wait a minute, he's coming up the hallway. And he's, he's right near here by the, by the door. It said, but I can't see him. He's standing not close enough to be able to see him. And she goes, I'm picking him up too. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I, then I heard him say, I'm gone, you know, in my mm-hmm. head. And I turned around and I said, he just told me I'm gone. Right. And then the guy goes, well, let's listen on the, on the uh, voice recorder. So they mm-hmm. turn it off and run it back and they play it. And they hear, I'm gone. Wow. And then they both looked at me like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Right. Um, Right after that, I felt real strongly that there was a very negative entity right by the door. Mm-hmm. And I'm just sitting there. I'm not saying anything. And Michelle goes, there is something very dark. And I said, right on the other side of the door. She goes, yeah. And I said, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I know who it's after. And they said, Ooh. what? And I said, yeah. And they said, who? And I said, the young girl that's with us. Well, yeah. the young girl's mother turned into Mama Grizzly. <laughs> which was really cool. You're not getting anywhere near my door. <laughs> that means she goes off on it, and it's still over there. So I just said, very matter of fact, I said, I know what you are, I know where you are, and you are not getting anywhere near any of these people. Yeah. Right. And Michelle goes, we will not allow you over here. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I felt like it was gone. So. Oh, wow. I, I, can, I don't know if I attribute that to be hold, to have been holding all these people's hands and using all their energy and being holding onto a you know a medium's hand mm-hmm. because I'd never had that happen before. Wow. You know, so it was, it was very interesting. I mean, the fact that I, I kind of think now when mediums tell me more stuff that I might be paying more attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then, um, Triple G's wanted to know if the Overlook Hotel is haunted. By any chance, if you will know. Well, I've never been to the Overlook Hotel, so I don't know. I hope that answered your question, Chipuji. Where is the Overlook Hotel? I've heard of it. Um, she said that's the one from the Shining. I think the hotel from the Shining. Oh no, that that, you're, that was the, the one from the Shining. Is it's called the Stanley. Yeah, hotel. the Stanley Hotel. Yeah, the, and the Stanley I, Hotel is very haunted. Um, but from what I understand now, they're not letting any ghost hunters in there anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, Kane has been there. Uh, I know that Nick Groff went there and had a big adventure. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty much everybody that's been there has had some sort of experience. Mm-hmm. I so, heard. Yeah, I would say Stanley is probably haunted. I heard the um, Linda Vista Hospital, you can get really some interesting experiences there, huh? Well, yeah, I had several that actually mm-hmm. happened there. You can't go there anymore, though, because they turned it either into condos or old folks home or, or in the process. Oh, really? So there's no more ghost hunting there. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I actually, we I was we were shooting a, um, a demo reel. Somebody wanted us to do a TV show. Mm-hmm. So we're shooting this demo reel, and I'm standing there with this uh, girl uh, who's in our group and the uh, director of the thing and the sound girl. And the four of us are standing there, and I hear right in the middle of us, and I look over at the other people and only the girl that's with me is looking up at me you know she's got kind of big eyes and I said did anybody hear that and the girl goes the growl and I said yeah and she goes yeah I heard it and the other two people neither one of them heard it we're all within two feet of each other wow well, that was interesting but later on we were we all were all had uh, microphones on you mm-hmm. know you know so they could hear our voices while we were doing the, this thing. Yeah. And uh, everybody else was down. So I walked off down to the hallway to do a little ghost hunting. And I'm used to, uh, you know, when I'm on the set or something like that, that I usually have a headset on, you know, yeah. when I'm coordinating so they can get hold of me. And uh, I hear Rick. I went, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I know I got a microphone on. 
Yeah. And then I hear, Rick. I go, right? Yeah. And I go, what? Right? Uh-huh. And then I hear the sound girl from down the way yell. She goes, you don't have a headpiece. Nobody's calling you. Ooh. And I turned around and I went, well, somebody is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was interesting. Then the last thing that night, we all went up to the third floor, just me and the girl and the shooting crew, because the other uh, Ari and Kate had left. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're walking down the hallway, and I said, everybody stop. You know, somebody said, what, what's up? And I said, I hear voices. Now, if you're in a long hallway like that, and you've done ghost hunting, you realize that mm-hmm. sound can run across the top of the ceiling. Yeah. So it can be quite a ways away from you, but you'll hear like bubble sound like <laughs> One can't hear it, but you know it's talking. Yeah. So I'm standing there, and the girl says to me, she goes, I don't hear it. And right then, very clearly in the doorway off to our left, a woman's voice said something. And she turned and looked at me, and she goes, I heard that. Bye. She <laughs> 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 went scoot, scoot in the other direction. <laughs> so, yeah, but then we've had some things happen with the Vista Hospital. Yeah, I heard so much about that place, too, being like full of stories and all that. I'm like, wow, <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah, there's pretty much everybody who's been there has a story. Yeah. I know Nick had a, um encounter with somebody, a girl, I think I heard, Nick Groff. Oh, he got he got the crap scared out of him. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, too. he turned around. There was somebody standing right behind him, a lady standing yeah. like face to face with him and scared that kind of because he actually relayed that story in my magazine, which is at HollywoodGhostHunters.com. Shameless plug by me, oh, um, <laughs> but you you can read that story in there yeah. if you go to the archives. Oh, um, Chippa G's wants to know if you heard of the Yuma Territorial Prison in Arizona. What is the name of it? It's called Yuma Territorial Hos- Prison. It's a prison. I guess uh, it's haunted. If it's the one I'm thinking of, if that's the one where they they. Uh, beat the guy over the head and lit him on fire so that there's still an outline of his body in the by the cell block. I have heard of that one. I almost got a chance to go to the, that one to work on a movie, and then they did, ended up not doing the movie. But I have heard about that place. It's, that's supposed to have a lot of negative energy in it, yeah. which is not surprising. You know, because a lot of people got killed in this big uh, riot that they had in the in the thing. And I'm yeah. not so sure it's called the Yuma one. I always thought it might have been maybe the Santa Fe or something like that, but it might be that one. Yeah, because she's from Arizona, so she, that's where she was asking me about. So, Well, I went to Tombstone not too long mm-hmm. ago. I went and investigated the birdcage, oh, which yeah. is really okay. famous. That's where Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp and all them cats used to hang out. Yeah. You know, and I went in there at night pieces of equipment all charged up new batteries and within 45 minutes every one of them was dead wow yeah and the funny part was when i got back to my hotel they uh, they started working not all of them okay. but like my cameras started working you know yeah. so it was, it was interesting the ones with battery regular batteries just drained yeah. the ones with rechargeables once i got back to my room they were working wow interesting Interesting. Oh, she said it's a museum and park in her area, that prison. There's a museum? Yeah, it's a, she said it's a museum and park, that um territorial prison in New Ma. That's how you say it. Oh, that, I, may have to, I may have to go there. A friend of mine, um, Tony Rathman, uh, has invited me to go down there, and there is... Uh, it's a hospital. It's a mm-hmm. really huge hospital and has invited me to be the only person that gets to go in there for this ghost hunt. Oh, wow. And that always appeals to me to be the, the only one in there because yeah. then you can't say somebody else did that. Matter of fact, in the magazine, I wrote a thing to the, an open letter to the people of Scotland. I said, here's what I'm going to make you a little proposition. If you will let me ghost hunt your place alone, mm-hmm. Here's the only qualification. We go in there with a policeman and go through to make sure nobody else is in there. Mm-hmm. You lock me in, and if I try to get out before the morning, I'll give you a thousand dollars in cash. Mm. And nobody took me up on it. Oh, I would have taken you up on it. <laughs> and the the only reason I wanted the cop to go there is that way they could say well, there's nobody here, right? 
so then if there was any noises or anything else, we could say, the policeman already said there's nobody here. If we hear noises way down at the other end of the hall, mm-hmm. something else is going on. But fortunately, the Scottish paranormal guys, the people from Premier Paranormal, the people from Anubis Paranormal in England, have all taken me to all, many, many, many different places. So I've been very lucky that way. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so the lady vamp did send me a picture on Facebook. I'll forward it to you. In fact, I'll do that mm-hmm. now. So she wanted to go and check it out. Have you see it? Um, and I'm happy to. Polly Vlog said thank you for answering his questions that he had. I don't know what questions you had, Polly, but apparently had a question. <laughs> I'm glad to answer anything anybody's got. I mean, just, you know, it's kind of why I'm on here right now. Yeah. That I just sent you a picture that she sent me, um, Nancy sent. And the story behind it, she said, um, it was a picture taken in the living room when, where she was and was told that a young man had died. And uh, she said she would film all the time. And one day they were taking pictures and that's how the picture came out for her mm-hmm. so that's what she told me about that picture well it could definitely be uh, definitely be something um, the things that you always have to watch out though sometimes is that you can just get a piece of your finger mm-hmm. you know over there and it'll bounce you know if it's a flash it'll bounce right off of there and onto the lens so you know, it could be that also. Okay. You know, but it, it's a very interesting looking picture because uh, and that's that's quite a bit of energy just to be all of a sudden. Yeah, that is an interesting picture too. So I gotta say, so that. she might she she might have caught something good. Yeah. Hey, it's Deidre says she wants to know if heaven is real. I think we all want to know if heaven is real. <laughs> don't understand the question she said she wants to know if heaven is real someone named Dietro. Uh in my my estimation it is 100 percent real hopefully they that helped you out Deidre, with your question if heaven is real yeah i mean i've i've, I've had a couple of experiences that um I, I really won't share with anybody because they're very personal. Yeah. But I have no doubt there's heaven. Yeah. No doubt at all. Hopefully I get to go there and see it. But uh, yeah. I've, I've actually kind of been shown it a couple of different times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I have no doubt about it. And if it had something happen that it can be nothing else. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, you know, I'd love to be able to tell you, and because the people that I tell, I would never tell it on the radio, but yeah. people that I tell in person, you know, in confidence, they all go, holy crap. Like, okay. yeah, that's yeah. strong. I would love to hear about that one day, but of course you don't have to tell me. That's totally fine. Yeah, I would never say it on the radio. Yeah. I think hell is definitely real. Triple G's asked if hell is real. She wants to know if hell is real, too. Well, let me ask you this. Ask her if she believes in angels. Triple G's, do you believe in angels? I'm sure you heard um, Rick ask that. Right now, she's not typing, so... I mean, there's nothing coming up. Well, the, the one thing I get all the time is I'll say, well, I think this this entity was demonic and i'll ask people i said do you believe in demons they go no 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 i said do you believe in angels oh yes and i said you do realize it's the same story same story so if there is a heaven then the same story tells you that yeah there probably is a hell yeah she said yes she says she believes in angels okay well it's just it's, it's the same story you know the angels and demons are the same same story. Mm-hmm. I heard that. You story. know, if there's angels, then there's a heaven. If there's a heaven, then there's supposed to be a hell. So yeah. Do I know that for a fact? 
No. And I hope never to find out about hell. Yeah, I don't want to find out about <laughs> that either. Oh, somebody said that they're here, but she's getting scared. So she said she's telling me hi and bye. <laughs> don't get scared. You're you're protected. Trust me on this. Uh, tell her tell her to hang in there. I'll tell her a story that shows you how you're protected. Uncle, don't go yet. You gotta listen. So I, hopefully she didn't leave it. But you can go ahead and share that story. Well, I was in Tennessee watching my dad's house, so that and the family business, so that uh, my dad and stepmother could go for, on a month long trip to Australia. Uh -huh. Well, I drove my 280ZX there because I had another car and I was going to sell the 280, and it was mm -hmm. registered in Tennessee. So I figured, yeah, this is cool. I'll just drive back, you know, sell the car there. Well, my dad lived in kind of a ritzy neighborhood, not real super ritzy, but, you know, yeah. upscale neighborhood. And, you know, to get in, put the car in the garage, you had to drive down a hill and into the garage. Mm -hmm. Well, it was probably like 11 o'clock at night, and I had put an ad in, in the paper, you know, to sell the car. Mm -hmm. So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to change the oil, right? Yeah. So I jacked up, jacked up the car, and I got the, the oil pan and the ratchet. All you got to do is undo one bolt. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I got in there trying to get the thing off, and it won't come loose. Mm -hmm. So I, being being me, I'm like you, dirty rotten, no good for that. You know, I'm going to give this thing the most uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, yank you can imagine to get this thing loose. Yeah. So just so I get ready to pull on it, I hear a voice right behind my right ear, and it said, "Let it go." So I kind of froze. I thought somebody was in the garage. Yeah. And I had the garage closed. And everything else. So I slid out from under the car and I opened up the garage door. There's nobody outside. So I thought somebody's in the house. Yeah. So I went inside, went all through the house, nobody there. So I got back. So that's my imagination. So I go back under the car. Now, 280ZX is a very low slot car. Mm -hmm. It was a sports car. So I crawl back under there and I put the ratchet on there again and I just get ready to do it. And I hear a very stern voice go, let it go. Yeah. Right? So I said, all right, something's up. So I started to slide out from the car, and I swear on my honor, I had just cleared the car when it fell off the jack. Mm -hmm. And it, the, the car went past my head, the top of my head, and I actually felt the side of the car go through the top of my hair. Wow. That's how close it came to killing me. Now, wow. twice I heard voices telling me to let it go. Uh -huh. I have no explanation for that other than the fact that someone was watching out for me. Yeah. Wow. So don't be afraid. Someone will watch out for you too. <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid. Definitely don't. Well, no, this. I'm old, I'm fat, and I still go to all these places, and I'm still here, so <laughs> no reason to be afraid. Uh, Funko, I'm going to mention your name. I hope you heard that story. Because everybody is saying wow and holy smokes and I hope you heard that, Funko. <laughs> so there's no reason to be afraid. But I thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing this with me and answering everybody's questions and answering my questions and all that. I truly appreciate it so much. Well, I had a great time, so thank you for asking me. Yeah, I'm glad you had a great time. I re I learned so much from you just from this call and everything else. I truly appreciate it. I really do. Well, you're more than welcome. I'd be happy to come back anytime you want me. Oh, that would be wonderful if we could do that. We can do it again like this in the future. If anybody else is interested, because I would like to do it again, if possible. And I haven't even started to tell you some cool stories. Oh, we should save that for part two. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm writing a I'm writing a book, and it's just like Ooh. I have so many things to put down. You know, mm -hmm. it's like oh boy. Yeah, definitely a part two if you're willing to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always willing to talk to people. A very friendly person. <laughs> Thank you. If people are telling you, yeah, come back, I guess come back, <laughs> they want you to come back for a part two. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, I'll definitely. So good, set good it. feedback. I like it. Yeah, they said they had a great time. Thank you for being here. Heck yes, come back. Yes, yes, yes. This is so great. <laughs> they really loved loved this. So. Well, it's very good. I appreciate that. All right. Well, it was fun being on, and I guess I'll talk to you again another time. Yeah, I'll definitely be in contact with you on Facebook, and I'll send you that picture from the battleship Missouri as well. Okay, that'd be cool. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Grace. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody. I'm still here. I'm going to be talking to you guys now. But thank you, thank you, thank you to Rick for being on. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, let me see. Okay, I got me on. Can you guys hear me okay? I mean, know if you guys can hear me. Let me turn this thing off. But thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Because I actually... No, no, no. Find it, Paula. Not like you can eat it. Then go away. Not like you. <laughs> My cutie. I'm going to tell him that. Um, Triple G is not okay. No, I'm not leaving. Not leave me. Oh, you guys are so mean. Find it, Mike. Because I know my dumb um, special guest. You guys are going to leave me. Oh, you guys are so mean. You guys sort of kind, huh? Oh. Logan, take your, um, do your thingy. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I have. Oh, that was so interesting. I got to learn so much more stuff, and, um, I hope you guys got to learn more. And Triple G's, that was definitely sort of kind. Yeah, I sort of kind, you know that? Sort of kind. Okay, sort of wait, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm getting hot in the, the room, so I'm moving to another room, but I hope... Oh, my gosh, that was so amazing. Oh, Funko, you sort of... Oh, I don't like you. You, like, ran away from me fighting sister, Mary Clarence. But, yeah, no need to be scared. You can stay and listen. There's no reason to be terrified. But... I hope he, oh, that was so awesome. And as you guys heard, he was on Ghost Adventures. That's how I found out about him. And I've been fortunate enough to be friends with him on Facebook as well. Crack me up. Yeah, you guys crack me up too. You guys sort of kind. I don't know what to make of you guys. You guys too the kind. So, but yeah, I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I have. But, Logan, is it okay if I, did you do the, your, the kind? Yeah. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. That was something, oh, I could go on. Oh, I can't, I look forward to part two. So hopefully we can do a part two. That's right. If you guys are interested in a part two, let me know. Definitely. Yeah, go check out his website. It is HollywoodGhostHunters.com. It was fun and interesting. Yeah, it really is interesting when you actually take the time out to listen. And yeah, it's scary. And the same time when you actually listen and not be scared like Funko Pop, you can actually enjoy it. And it's, you find it fascinating. I find it fascinating anyway. But once again, that is just me. I should just stay in the living room because you guys will hear it sound like they're winding down. But I find it fascinating. I actually find it really fascinating. But like Polly, I know he mentioned it in a comment. I can't find the comment now, but he mentioned in the comment about being chicken and running away. Nighttime. I'm, I'll get scared. I get scared easily at time, so I would probably run away. But, oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm sure. Hopefully, he can um accept your friend request, but he is a great person to talk to. That's the first time I actually talked with him fully like that. And like I said, I did find him on, um, well, not find him, but... I saw him, I chicken, <laughs> I chicken nighttime, especially chicken buck buck and all that kind of stuff. But 
like I said, when we were chatting, I did find about him through Ghost Adventures. I think it was in the Pico house he mentioned. Um, but that's how I heard about him and Kane. He was talking about Kane. Um, it was and the Hollywood Ghost Hunters. It was through Ghost Adventures. So I definitely go and recommend you guys going and checking out his website. And that story with Nick Groff, I don't know if, hey, it, hey it's dangerous to hear, but I remember watching that episode with Linda Vista, and he did encounter um, someone, a lady, and they went back, the Zach, Nick, and um, Aaron, they ended up doing a part two at Linda Vista Host Hospital. And I did hear that they were selling it or something like that, and they were going to turn it into a parking lot or something like that. And they went back, and he had a drawing of the lady um, that he had somebody do for him. And just happened a nurse that used to work at Linda Vista, used to hear. I don't know if you saw that episode, Hey, it's Deidre, but the lady, a nurse that used to work at Linda Vista Hospital, um, she had the same encounter as Nick. Uh, the picture that Nick was able to get drawn, he showed it to the lady. And the lady did say that's how the person that she saw looked like. So I can, like, vouch for it. I don't, I don't want to use vouch, but I saw that episode and whatnot. So I kind of know what he was talking about when it comes to that. But my time, definitely, I guess, I'm not sure if he did. But yeah, nine time I get scared easily. Oh, that was I am so glad I went with, through with this and we had that here. Oh I am so glad that we did that. I did that. I am so happy. You guys don't know how happy I feel right now, but I am so happy. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you guys did. Cause I really did too. Um and thank you guys for asking questions. I know a lot of people get scared with that kind of stuff, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I went through with it. Um, because like I was saying, there was a party going on downstairs, but for our at our building. But oh, I am so glad that I went through it. I really enjoyed it, and I think we may have to um do it again like that with the speaker phones. But yeah, that is something that we have to set up round two, part two. So I cannot wait to hear more stories and all that kind of stuff. And oh, I'm excited. Can you tell I'm excited? This is a good kind of time. Yeah, I would love to have him come back on. Oh, <laughs> I'm excited. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is my excitement. Like, especially if it's a topic that I'm interested in. Um. Yeah, he does seem great, you know. Um, of course, if you guys are on Facebook, yeah, it was great. I really was great, lady fam. You know, by all means, feel free. If you guys, if if and when we do part two, he, I think he mentioned that he would love to come back on as well. Um, if and when we do have a part two, feel free to ask questions, ask away, and I want part two as well, and. I know you guys asked question the question about if heaven was real. I know there's a song by Zach Baggins um, with Ghost Adventures that I forget the name of the song exactly, but part of the lyrics go, if you believe in heaven, you must believe in hell because they go hand in hand. Yeah, it's interesting. It is, I dealt with the paranormal myself. I did share some of my stories and with you guys on here with rick as well that was on here as well and it is scary if you let it be scary but if you also don't let it, knowing that if you know that there's a protection that you can do for you besides prayers and all that kind of stuff it won't like bother you as much it shouldn't that should be that scary but like i was saying there's a song by zach baggins that part of the lyrics go if you believe in heaven you must believe in hell um yeah, good and evil, good and God and the devil does go hand in hand. Good and evil does go hand in hand. So definitely heaven is real. Um, I know that and I know there's an opposite side of it, but 
this is what I hope to bring to our channel as well with the live streams, you know, more topics like this that can go on hand in hand with the um, family vlogs and whatever. Yeah, so as long as you know, like Polly um, and anybody who's listening, if you know that you have the protection of something with you, if anything that's supernatural or paranormal or anything like that, if you have the protection, whether it's prayer or whatever you want to use for protection, you will be okay. As long as you know what to do and how to handle it, okay? Um, so if this, oh my God, this, I am so, it went so great. And I am really excited that I got the chance to do this with you guys. Because, you know, this is actually kind of the stuff that I'm interested in as well as the paranormal and all that. And I was hoping that was my goal, when, that my goal for when we came back to have more um, things that I know a lot of you guys, you requested him on FB too. Like I know a lot of you guys like Pokey and Panic D. Really, um, I would love to do that too. Oh, it would have been so great if Panic D could have come on as well. Panic D Paranormal. And... um. Yeah, but he had nothing to do with Star Wars. That was a different rig. Um, but, like, that was my goal when I was thinking about it with our break. That how can I make the live streams more interesting for you? Especially with keeping up with the family vlogs and things that interest Logan and I. Yeah, Pat, I'm surprised Pokey never show up. Oh, brother man gets some stories. I know he can tell too. Um, but... I put you in my bag. <laughs> I know, you know I saw that comment. But yeah, that you know, this is one of the things that I'm interested in. I wish you had posted on the Yeah, I never thought about doing that. I'll after the live is over, I'll post it in their um FB group. Yeah, I can share it. Um afterwards and then talk about part two. So Oh, this is, you know, for me, that was my goal with the live streams, you know, especially on Sundays, you know, if we can make it, if I can make it something that I know that will interest you guys, especially with stuff that interests me and Logan and whatever, you know, it'll be diff awesome for you guys and awesome for all of us in the end. But I am definitely one that is highly interested in the paranormal. And he mentioned the spirit box, EVPs, that kind of stuff. That, that kind of stuff I know already. And I would love to get that kind of, um, equipment for us too but they cost an arm and a leg so but i really hope you guys enjoyed it i really hope that you guys did okay i'm gonna end this lady vamp that is a good suggestion i'm gonna because i do have to use the bathroom so i'm gonna end it here this paranormal chat talk with rick mccullum and then i'll come back to hang out after do a hangout live so i'll be back in a few guys <laughs>